In this video, we will make our own 4-cell 18650 lithium-ion battery charger using EagleCAD. I know you can make similar setups using pre-built modules, but I find the design process to not only be rewarding, but more fun. Let's get started. To charge the 18650 cells, I decided to use the MCP73831 IC. I have a few of these on hand, so I figured I'd use them instead of ordering more TP4056 um, ICs. That and it requires fewer components than the TP4056, which means it will have a smaller footprint, which is nice. Now, if you plan on copying this or, you know, altering the circuit for your own use, I encourage you to read through the data sheet, but for now, I'll just glimpse over it. Uh, we, we can see that it's a linear charge controller, which means that it'll generate a little bit of heat, but should be manageable. We have quite a few options for current charge. I'm going to use the 500 milliamp option for, you know, higher capacity 18650 cells. And uh, that's it for the data sheet portion, I think. Now, if we look at the typical application, we will see that they're showing the 500 milliamp uh, application, which is what I'll be using. So this exact circuit right here is what I took and just imported into Eagle, essentially. So we can look at the schematic and see that we have pretty much the same uh, circuit set up there, except, you know, four of them for four 18650 cells. In addition to that, I added pads for battery hookups where we'll solder the 18650 holder, pads for the 5 volt input, and two mounting holes to mount the circuit board. So for fun, we can look at the board I came up with. Now this can probably be made better if you want, but I just thought this was good enough. It has the two mounting holes right there, so we can just mount it to whatever I can, you know, come up with. Um, another thing to note is that the top layer is a ground pour. The reason why I did it on the top was to take away some of the heat that the that the uh, linear chargers will generate. And that is pretty much it. So let's go ahead and send this out for fabrication and solder it up. I designed this board with the smallest parts being an 0603 package. They look intimidating, but with enough practice they are really easy to solder. I start by adding solder to one pad, then I slide the part in and add solder to the next side. I want to make this setup a bit more rigid, so I used a piece of balsa wood to mount everything to. At the time of editing this video, I actually bought a 3D printer and I was considering making a 3D printed case for this, but I really like the look of just the wood and circuit board, so I'm going to keep it like this for now. I want to run the negative wires underneath the board to give it more of a clean look, so I marked holes for the wires and drilled them out. Now that all the holes are drilled, I can assemble everything. These cell holders aren't the greatest and the one mounting hole on them isn't enough to keep them from moving all over the place. So I sanded the bottom of the holders and used epoxy in combination with the screw to really hold them to the wood.
Now we can solder the cell wires to the board. Let's get brave and slap some cells into the holder for charging. Before I begin, I measured the voltage of the cells to see if it would climb while charging. Nothing has exploded, so it's looking pretty good so far. Since the voltage and current requirements fall within that of a decent USB charger, I decided to use a scrap USB cable as a power cable. This will then plug into a 2.4 amp USB charger. This circuit can charge a cell at 500 milliamps, so there should be enough to charge all four cells at once if each cell uses 500 milliamps. After a few hours of charging, I noticed two LEDs were still lit. The LEDs turn off when the cell is charged, so I did some poking around and found that the two cells were the problem. They reached a max voltage of 4.1 volts, which honestly isn't that bad. I then tested the cell holders with two different cells to roll out a fault in the circuit. They charge just fine, so it's more than likely just a bad cell. To further test the suspect cells, I dropped them in a charger that I know works, and after a few hours they remained at 4.1, refusing to go any higher. So I'll more than likely just end up recycling these ones, or getting as much life out of them as I possibly can. That's all for this video, let me know in the comments below what you think, subscribe if you'd like to, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.